go from that beautiful, and she was beautiful, she was beautiful woman, to what she looked like, and nobody did anything about it. After two years in Nashville, Tammy was on the crest of a wave. She had critical recognition, the respect of her fellow artists, and international success. But some people suspected that Tammy was hurtling towards tragedy. Well, it was stomach related. She never really got off the road long enough to, to heal. I know she was doing medication or drugs uh, when I was in high school, but she kept it very, very covered up. My ex-husband was her road manager, and he would come home, you know, several times and say, we had to stop at this hospital or we had to cancel. And then, you know, I'd go over and I'd see her, and I would notice that she would just not be herself. So then I realized something's not right here. She was now taking substantial doses of prescription painkillers Demerol and Delordid, which are so powerful they're only generally prescribed in cases of terminal illness. As well as being potent painkillers, they're also highly addictive, creating an agonizing withdrawal as they wear off. Users become trapped in a vicious cycle of withdrawal and the need for further pain relief. She was going into the hospital a lot and she was tired a lot and she stopped going places, shopping, and to lunch. Hi. Not one to stay single for long. A year and a half later, Tammy married husband number five, songwriter George Ritchie, but all was not well. Just five months after the wedding, Tammy was kidnapped. She was found by the side of the road 80 miles from Nashville. She claimed to have been abducted and beaten. Tammy's daughter, Georgette, has since claimed that in fact the kidnapping was staged. George Ritchie had beaten her. George Ritchie had now taken charge of the complex business of administering her medication, even though he is not a qualified physician. We went to a bookstore and got this big dictionary and looked it up and said Demerol and, and what its side effects would be. And we showed it to Ritchie, hoping then, because we really were thinking by then that he would help her. And he said, you know, thanks for showing that to me and then we never saw him give her another shot. He started sneaking around and it was all behind our backs after that. It was never discussed up front of was with me at the show and I remember he and I going on the bus and seeing her and she was hooked up to a breathing machine then and Richie, George Richie uh, unhooked her. They practically had to carry her down the stairs onto the stage where she sat in a chair she couldn't stand and I remember standing backstage with my friend Greg and he was just mortified he was like I can't believe that you know this is allowed she has to do this she came off the stage she went back in the bus and they hooked her back up rumors circulated that Tammy had AIDS others said that she needed a liver transplant in fact it was the effect of the opiates Demerol and Delorded have devastating effects on the body. They cause premature aging, respiratory failure, massive water retention in the joints, and cripple the digestive system so much that the addict can no longer take nourishment by mouth. Multiple injections had destroyed Tammy's veins, even the ones between her toes. She was fitted with a catheter in her back to pump her painkillers directly into the main artery. George Ritchie supervised her home health care and administered the drugs. I remember hugging her at a BMI banquet about a year before she died, and there was nothing there but, but apparatus. Under her dress were all of this medical junk, and she was just so painfully thin, and I said, Are, do you feel okay? Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine. You know, she was always just sailing through, you know, trying to keep on working and keep on contributing. And that's stupid because she took the majority of her food intravenously because her stomach had been operated and butchered so many times that she didn't have a stomach, so she had to take uh, nutrition um, intravenously. The physical changing her Oh, was so drastic, and I hadn't seen her in a, a, way a few months. 
And so her legs were all swollen and her ankles were swollen and her feet were cracked and she was pale and pasty looking and I must have just looked shocked and she said, don't worry, she said, I'm not going to die. And I said, how do you know, Tammy? Her legs were this, were like tree trunks. They were so swollen. And I started crying. I said, oh, Tammy, what's going to happen? And she said, oh, don't cry. I'll be fine. I'll be just fine. Don't you cry. She said, I've learned to live with this. She said, this is my life. She said, it's not a life I wish on anybody. She said, but it's a life that I've come to accept. And she said, I'm not going to die, and I don't want you to look so upset. And she said, and, and everything will be fine. And last year was awarded the prestigious Living Legend Award, Miss Tammy Lynette. How you could go from that beautiful, and she was beautiful, she was a beautiful woman, to what she looked like, and nobody did anything about it was so horrifying. The way she the looked Opry to me was, her was last. horrifying. Three months later, on April 6, 1998, Tammy Wynette died. Despite her appearance, she was only 55. Within a matter of days, her daughter and friends were beginning to ask questions about her death. The official version was a blood clot. Jackie Daly was the first to voice her suspicions. The epitome of a country star and all of a sudden there's no Tammy it was like um, kind of like the death of, of country music despite the emotion of the service the doubts of Tammy's girls were deepening they couldn't understand why their mother's body had been taken straight from the house to the funeral home for embalming without going first to the morgue for an autopsy which would have been usual for a premature death such as this why had George Ritchie called his family and lawyer before informing Tammy's daughters? Why had Dr. Marsh been called to charter a jet and fly 600 miles from Pittsburgh to certify the death and not a local doctor? And how could Dr. Marsh diagnose a blood clot without examining the body? Backed into in a autopsy. corner by this evidence that strong opiates were being administered to Tammy, Ritchie authorized an autopsy. Tammy's body was exhumed a year and six days after she was buried. Not surprisingly, after this time, the results proved inconclusive. Whilst lab reports did reveal the presence of Versid, they failed to indicate evidence of Demerol or Delordid, synthetic morphine and heroin. These drugs are known to dissipate into embalming fluid. The report went on to say it's impossible to determine the exact levels of drugs at the time of death or to what extent, if any, the drugs kin, contributed he inherited to her all her assets, while Tammy's daughters got nothing. From her career and mine. Everything went to Richie, um, including any revenue that might be accrued from her recordings and all her personal belongings. However, there is a clause in the will that seems out of character for Tammy. It gives Richie full power to make a new will, benefiting whomever he likes, whenever he wants. In fact, Richie's next of kin is now 32-year-old ex-Dallas cowboy cheerleader Sheila Slaughter whom he married in January 2001. Tammy's girls claim he was seeing Sheila while Tammy was still alive. Richie denies this. Although Tammy's credit card receipts show that someone was ordering women's clothing in the week before she died, on the day she died, and during the week after her death. If her life had taken another path, I mean, look at George Jones. He found this wonderful woman who said, look, I'm gonna help you get off this. This is what we're going to do, and, and helped him, worked with him, and was there and supported him, and wouldn't put up with him drinking. Where, on the other hand, Tammy met someone who said, hey, I'm never ever going to let you be without a shot. I'm going to keep you with all the drugs you want, because I want to keep you happy. Well, now, what kind of love is that? And that was actually her. He actually said that. He did. I heard him say that. We asked George Ritchie to take part in this program. He refused unless he was given a substantial fee and editorial control. She wanted people to know the truth. And the truth that she felt, the truths that we all know and sometimes hide from ourselves. 
And I think that's one reason that her songs are so touching to people. But her demeanor and her gift was that she, she tried to be true. Thank you.